Come here. You're She's under arrest. With so much in territory. Okay, come on. You're under arrest. That's what it sounded like on a remote forest road in northern British Columbia on November the 18th. Armed RCMP officers with police dogs and a chainsaw raided a cabin near the coastal gas link pipeline project, and they arrested about a dozen people. Most were Wet'suwet'en First Nation land defenders who'd been blockading the access road to the company's construction site. But the arrest footage was filmed by Michael Toledano. He's one of two journalists who were also arrested there at the same time. The pair had been embedded with the activists to document the year-long conflict over who owns the land where the pipeline is being built. The disputed area is about the size of New Jersey. And while some 20 Indian bands on reserves say they want the pipeline and the jobs, the hereditary chiefs in charge of land outside the reserves do not. Michael Toledano was there filming the blockade for the CBC, but he wasn't parachuted in from Toronto. He's lived and worked as a journalist in the area for several years. He's also the grandson of a famous Jewish partisan, the late Moisha Lezebnik, who fought the Nazis in the forests of Poland and was a photographer, as was Moisha's sister, Faye Shulman, who was Toledano's great aunt. And you might have heard about Shulman. She recently passed away in Toronto, and she was known as the wartime partisan photographer. Toledano channels that Jewish legacy as he recovers from spending four days in holding cells. We didn't actually make it to prison. Prison has all sorts of nice amenities like toothbrushes and soap and the ability to call people in the outside world. We were, we were kept in holding cells uh, for the duration. I was denied the opportunity to have phone calls with my lawyer. So uh, I've heard that prison would have been an upgrade from the holding cells we were kept in. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, December the 7th, 2021. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Michael Toledano is 32, and he spent the last decade telling stories with his camera about marginalized communities, and especially about Canada's First Nations and their struggles with mining and energy companies, with the police, and with various levels of government. He's also reported on Toronto's Black Lives Matter organization and police brutality. And while he's worked for reputable outlets like Al Jazeera and Vice and Rabble and CTV, Toledano makes it plain he is not neutral. He does take sides. And he's also done some commissioned work for some of the same communities he covers. So that could be why someone on social media recently called him an anarchist and why the RCMP admitted in court they've been keeping tabs on him for a while, although he had never had a criminal record until his recent arrest. Media groups, including the Canadian Association of Journalists, have slammed the RCMP for blocking freedom of the press. And Toledano's been making the rounds of media outlets since his release as he prepares for more court appearances in February to face the civil charges of contempt of court. Coming up, he'll be here to share why he thinks Jewish Canadians have a role to play in this conflict. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm Rebecca Weiss in Beersheba, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. There was some serious Canadian Jewish content on hand in the United Arab Emirates on the weekend to mark the end of Hanukkah. It happened in Dubai on the grounds of Expo 2020, where the Canadian government has a pavilion and so does Israel. The Emirates are welcoming Jewish culture now since the signing of the Abraham Accords with Israel last year. Canada brought over Jewish performer Aviva Chernik and her La Serena trio and It was Canada's gift to the Emirates on their national day. The musicians serenaded the guests at a party outside of the Israeli pavilion. And yes, food was involved too. And so were lighting of the menorah candles. Just before Michael Toledano joins us from his home in Smithers, B.C., I need to disclose that I am a member of the Canadian Association of Journalists, which is supporting the two arrested freelance photojournalists, but I am not in any way connected or involved at all with this whole story. How did you end up uh, being embedded and, and, and devoting the last years of your life to living this story? Well, uh, this is an incredibly important story, and uh, it's always really interested me as a kind of David and Goliath story since I first encountered the people here. You know, you have a handful of indigenous leaders, and you have some of the largest corporations on earth, and there's always been this this confidence and the certainty that the indigenous people here would be, you know, protecting their land. Um, in I, I've come to understand it as, you know, just this massive conflict over 
Canada's uh, claim to lands in general throughout this province, there's an area of 22,000 square kilometers that the Wet'suwet'en claim as their own, that Canada has no treaty for, no bill of sale for, no, uh, you know, formal agreement. So the only thing that has ever made this a part of Canada has been RCMP violence, has been RCMP officers showing up and removing people from their homes at gunpoint. And this is a, you know, history that that spans back to the inception of the RCMP on these territories. Um, So for me, this is a major story about human rights, not just the environment. Now, on your social media, you've called yourself a white settler and doing this work um, for various media outlets. Um, How does a nice Jewish boy from Toronto become, you know, embedded as an activist documenting as well? You ask about how a nice Jewish boy ends up so uh, fixated and interested in this issue. You know, my, my Judaism is primarily cultural, and I think it comes from this, you know, horrific collective experience that so many uh, Jews went through. Uh, my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor, uh, Moshe Lezebnik, and my great aunt was a, a Holocaust survivor as well. They were both partisan resistance uh, s- soldiers. And uh, my great aunt Faye Shulman is quite well known as a photographer who documented the Jewish resistance within the partisans uh, to, you know, Nazi atrocity. And so I think that Jews, having been through this experience of violent cultural erasure of genocide, should be able to recognize when it's happening elsewhere and should be on side uh, and, you know, in a in a supportive, uh, you know, capacity when they recognize that it's happening elsewhere. I think the experience that Jewish people have had and have survived is not dissimilar in many ways to the experience of indigenous people in Canada. You look at the residential schools and the mass graves that are turning up. This is, uh, you know, like I know that my whole family on my mother's side, um, you know, my my grandfather's children and his parents and his siblings um, and their families all ended up in a mass grave. Um, there's a similarity there. The The residential schools attempted to criminalize and destroy culture to to make uh, to you know to beat children for speaking their language uh, to to erase that sense of identity and self and also you know we talk about I know in my own family history um, you know our family home was taken over and occupied by Nazis um, and turned into an operational outpost in in the town of Lenin and the taking up and dispossession of indigenous lands so that they can become white homes is similar to me. Um, I think that there's so many points of, uh, you know, shared experience and Jews have a responsibility in my view to stand with indigenous people, um, you know, in this country who are bearing the brunt of settler colonialism. I think a lot of Jewish people moved out of that experience of trauma and the Holocaust and settled in Canada. Um, But, you know, I can speak from my own experience. I grew up not knowing uh, the first thing about residential schools, the first thing about the Indian Act, the first thing about the past system, or how, you know, the violent dispossession of this land had occurred and was occurring. And, you know, all that to say that I think a lot of Jewish Canadians are are not fully aware or appraised of what is happening so that we can live a better life here. Um, you know, and often are maybe not even aware that they're participating in violence against indigenous people in passive ways, like through investments or in active ways. How does your family feel about the work that you're doing and the scrape you got into scrape? And I say that in a nice way. I didn't mean it as to demean it at all. Uh, well, my mother was, uh, you know, my first consideration, how worried she would be. And uh, I I made sure that my uh, lawyer had her contact information so that she could know that I was okay. Um, But if I was held in jail any longer, I'm sure she would have flown out to the side of the country. uh, And, you know, she's been attending, uh, you know, rallies in solidarity with the Wet'suwet'en and she's paying attention to the issues. So, um, 
you know, there's large parts of my family, I'm sure, that don't see the issues in the same way that I do. But uh, I think that they, they respect the work that I'm doing and the commitment to telling the story. So coming back to um, coming back to your roots and, you know, being uh, the Jewish um, reporter there, do you ever experience any um, anti-Semitism or uh, other things that would be uncomfortable for you from people there? Uh, do they know you're Jewish? Well, th there's a lot of, uh, you know, racism and anti-Semitism in the North, for sure. Um, there is a you know, the holding cell I was kept in at the Prince George Courthouse not only had blood spattered on the wall, but had swastikas carved into it. Um, you know, a swastika was just put on Nathan Collins, uh, you know, uh, billboard on the highway. And uh, there are, you know, white supremacists in the towns up here that fly Confederate flags. Um, you know, the, the it's such an interesting relationship that, uh, you know, as an uh, part Ashkenaz and part Sephardic Jew, but as a, you know, white person, that I have to whiteness because I'm experienced the world as being white until a Nazi finds out that I'm Jewish. Um, and so the, the, you know, I, I haven't explicitly experienced anti-Semitism, but I have been, you know, uh, shot at by white supremacists who have come to one of the camps and fired off guns. Um, I have been, uh, you know, oddly, oddly kind of uh, brought into the fold with a lot of the anti-Indigenous violence that I've seen up here and, and you know, been on the receiving end of that just just merely by being out here. And so if I understand the proceedings, you can't go back. Your trial is in February. And what do you do in the meantime? I, I think this is precisely where I can draw upon the strength of my ancestors and my grandfather and, uh, you know, my great aunt, Faisalman, and think about the uh, unbelievable amounts of uh, trauma and violence they had to go through and how they were still, you know, able to capture images, beautiful images of the resistance that they were, in that case, you know, fighting for to avenge their families. Um, I think that, you know, it's really important in this context to to not only have images of violence against Indigenous people, of Indigenous people being victimized, but to document how this is an incredible and resilient uh, resistance. And so I have to channel some of that resilience myself. And, uh, you know, I, I won't be scared away from following the story. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia, integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Suri Weinberg-Linsky. She owns Squibs Stationers. It's a bookstore that's been around for over 90 years in the Toronto suburb of Weston, Ontario. And we'll end the episode with a little sneak peek from an upcoming show. It's about young Canadian lone soldiers serving in the Israeli Defence Forces, including one who fought in the recent war between Israel and Hamas in May. I was actually in the middle of the fields. We were in the shooting ranges sleeping. And then we get a text at two in the morning saying, okay, we need to go to Tzoma Tapuach um, at like five in the morning, bus they're coming to get us, which Tzoma Tapuach, if you've heard about it, it's where one of the most dangerous uh, junctions in all of Israel, um, lots of shootings have gone down there, lots of stabbings and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm.